Okay, this is problem number two from the 2012 AP Physics B exam, and it is primarily dealing in the world of mechanics, specifically energy and momentum. And in this problem, we have a small object of mass big M and a larger object uh, three times that value dropped simultaneously from rest. The large one strikes the floor. It has fallen a height of H. And uh, we are going to ignore any effects of air resistance or anything like that. We want to put all of our answers in terms of M and H and any constants that are fundamental. So A, derive the expression for the speed VB for which the large sphere strikes the floor. We are going to analyze this uh, independently of the big M above it. Uh, it's, they're both going to fall at the same rate, so they will not interact with each other until after they bounce. So for now, for A, we can look at just the 3M mass, and we're going to use, I'm going to use potential energy to kinetic energy. You could use kinematics too if you want, but I'm going to say the potential energy in the initial stage will equal that kinetic energy right towards the bottom, which means this could be mgh. Well, if I'm looking at the 3m object, it's 3mgh, uh, equaling one half of 3m times v at that spot, which they're calling vb, so one half 3m vb squared. And from that, we're going to rearrange this for V. Uh, okay, so your M's cancel each other out. Uh, you can multiply by 2 to get V by itself, and then we're going to square root. Caleb McLaren, your right is here on the gym side of the school. Caleb McLaren. My 3's cancel out, too. So I'm going to get 2GH, and then I take the square root of that. That's going to equal VB. This particular problem, this part, was worth two points. It is in terms of all our fundamental constants given, or our variables. That's what we need. Alright, immediately after striking the floor, the large sphere begins to move up with the speed VB, and it's going to collide head-on with the small sphere, which is moving down with the same speed VB at that instant. Immediately after the collision, the small sphere then moves up with the speed VS, and the large sphere has VL. We want to derive an equation that's going to relate VB, VS, and VL all together. Uh, if you think about it, they're colliding. We have speeds before, we have speeds after. This is a traditional momentum problem. And right before the collision, we have to address M1, V1, plus M2, V2. And then right after that collision, they're going to bounce and they are going to change speed. So we're going to have M1 V1 prime plus M2 V2 prime. I'm going to go ahead and make a quick knowns list so I show that M1 is actually my larger mass, the 3M. V1 is going to be upward VB. I'm going to treat upward as positive. M2 is the smaller mass, big M. And V2 is the same VB, but it's down, so it's a negative, negative VB. We know after they collide, um, it says that the small sphere moves up with speed Vs, and the large sphere, sphere has Vl. So we're going to say V1 prime is Vl, and then finally V2 prime is Vs. I'm going to go ahead and just plug these in for my variables up here. And try to simplify this. So I'm going to have 3m vb plus m negative vb so really that plus turns into a negative Let me go ahead and erase that so minus m vb will equal 3m vl plus m vs I'm able to cancel out all my M's since they're in every single term. And 3VB three three VB minus VB turns into 2VB. So 2VB equals 3VL plus VS. And that is the final answer here. Part B was also worth 2 points. So A was worth 2, B is worth 2. Now, continuing with this after they've bounced off the ground, in this particular situation, sometimes VL is equal to zero. 
So now for C, all we've got to do is account for that. So for C, we're going to take that same equation, 2VBL plus, or not plus, equals 3VL, okay, let's just do this again, 2VB equals 3VL plus VS, and we're just going to turn VL into zero. We want to know the small sphere in terms of VB, so we just got to get VS by itself. Well, VL is zero, VS is by itself. It's that simple. VS is indeed just 2VB. As you can imagine, this one's only worth one point. Finally, or not finally, D, indicate whether the collision is elastic, and we want to justify using parts, a, uh, parts B and C. And some of you are going to go right out and you're going to say elastic. Um, and you're going to say it is elastic because they bounce, and that's not always the case. What you've got to do for these problems, especially in these AP exams where it tells you to justify, you actually have to determine the initial kinetic energy of the system and compare it to the final kinetic energy of the system. If they're equal, it is elastic. If they're not equal, it's not elastic. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to figure out my initial kinetic energy. Well, let's do that for each object. This is before the collision. So the first object, the big 3M object, has a kinetic energy of 1 half, 3M, times its velocity, and this is after the bounce, but before the collision, so VB. And then we're going to square that. The second object has one half of m times its um, kinetic energy, or I'm sorry, its velocity squared, which is going to be negative vb squared. And so this ends up being three halves mvb squared minus mvb squared, not minus, I'm sorry, we're going to square that, so it makes it a plus. It's three halves mvb squared plus mvb squared over 2. Turning this whole thing in to 2m vb squared. That's the initial kinetic energy of the system of both objects. Now we're going to find the final kinetic energy of the system. And we're going to compare them. So we're going to do the same approach. Of course, the values are different. So my Ke final is going to be 1 half of 3m times its speed. Well, its speed is the VL term, right? May remember, VL is 0. So this ends up being um, zero. So there's no kinetic energy for the large object. The small object is one half of m times its speed vs squared. Um, and when we do that, we get to do something else because we recognize that it's going to be very difficult to compare two m v b squared to this. However, if I replace Vs with 2Vb and then square it, you'll see that number is a little bit easier to compare. So 2Vb squared is 4Vb squared, and 4 over 2 is 2, so this ends up being 2Mvb squared, uh, which is indeed the same. So yes, it is elastic. Okay. However, you would only get one point for that. The other two points comes from clearly showing the kinetic energy before to the kinetic energy after, and they are equal. So D is worth three points, and only one of them is for correctly identifying it that it is elastic. And then finally, we're going to go ahead and figure out how high uh, H, in terms of the original height, big H, the object will make it. And so to do that, we're going to have to compare the original energy to the final energy. So in the very, so I'm going to do my work for E over here. In the very beginning on, it's way back up, the small sphere has kinetic energy. And it's going to get itself to a 
high point, so it's going to have potential energy. And uh, I like, I'm going to put the PE on my left side because it's got the H term in there. So I have big M G H. H is the desired height that we're looking for. And that's going to equal one half of its uh, mass times its speed at that spot. Again, this is the small sphere after the collision, which ends up being 2VB. And I got to square it. So that ends up being 4VB squared. And the m's cancel out, that's not a problem. So if I divide g over and simplify, I'm going to get 2vb squared over g. And while g is acceptable to leave here, it's not acceptable to leave vb here because it's not in terms of the original height h. So instead I've got to figure out what vb is in terms of h. And if you remember way earlier, we determined that vb is radical to gh. So I'm going to go ahead and replace that with VB, and then, of course, I'm squaring a square root, so it's just going to get rid of the radical. So I'm going to have 2 times 2GH, so it's 4GH over G, and the G's cancel out, it ends up just being 4H. Um, so, yeah, that's the, final, that's the final answer for part E. And E was worth 2 points. You're basically going to get the one point for doing all this work up here, and you get the other point for getting it in terms of only H. So you could have still gotten a point out of it if you didn't remember to get rid of that VB. Uh, okay, this is a 10-pointer. You know, I think it's a relatively challenging 10-pointer. However, if you're comfortable keeping things in terms of variables, and remembering this last sentence, which is often something students screw up, keeping it in terms of m, h, and your fundamental constants, it's not too bad as long as you stay disciplined and go slow.